All right. So tonight I'm going to talk about mixed content. Um, this actually got me for work. Uh, we have an Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch cluster um, set up for uh, checking logging from a particular set of applications, or at the servers, not the applications. Um, and uh, when we were trying to view it, we found that we couldn't view it with one particular browser, but we could with another. And I'll get to what those are in a second. And it seemed weird that you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, what was happening was that uh, the one browser, Mozilla, was noticing that we had mixed content on the page. Now let me explain what mixed content is. Mixed content means that you have a secure web page, HTTPS, as we know from a previous presentation, uh, and it has non-secure content on that same page. So HTTP content on the same page. Now, how do you do that? Well, we can have a page like the one I was looking at earlier. Uh, by the way, we'll be doing a presentation on Lightbeam at some point too, but uh, that wasn't what I had tonight. There's an office. There you go. All right. So here we have images on the page. So let's say that this was a secure page. We can look at the top. It says HTTPS. So it is a secure page. But if those ser those images were coming from a different server, or even a server on the same machine, uh, but not coming from an HTTPS connection, coming from a plain HTTP, plain text, uh, or clear text connection, then those images would be mixed content for the secure web page. So why is this a problem? Well, if you think you're looking at a secure page, but some of it isn't coming in secure, then the non-secure content can be manipulated on the way. Somebody can easily do a man-in-the-middle attack, meaning they can sit in the middle and change the content uh, on you. And there's lots of places somebody can sit in the middle. We want to pretend it can't happen. It is kind of difficult and there's stuff, there's stuff everywhere, but it's certainly possible, uh, especially if they're wanting to attack you or you happen to have somebody using Internet Explorer on your same network. All right. So, um, anyway, so this is... Uh, one of the ways you can do that, you can also have uh, CSS, JavaScript, a lot of other things that are coming up as separate files. If those are coming in as HTTP rather than HTTPS, if they're on a clear text connection, or a plain a clear connection rather than a secure connection, then those can be changed on the fly as they're coming to you and give you malicious content. So if you were, for instance, getting a, uh, a prompt to log in, so let's say that that was a um, a frame where you have the login here type of thing, but that was coming on and as HTTP rather than HTTPS. You could be logging on to Bad Guy's site instead of your banking site, and now Bad Guy knows how to log into your bank account, and the funds in your bank account last only a few more minutes after that point. Right? We don't want this to happen. Um, but because the way that content is, comes up, there was no way to see that. I have no way of knowing, well, actually I do, because I can look at the source, but how many, how many of us go look at all of the source code for all of the web page that we're looking at, right? Uh, I haven't done that for a decade. Um, so we don't know, through looking at the browser, that this is getting us, giving us mixed content. Um, but it is a problem. And this is what we were running in with Elasticsearch, or Elasticsearch. So the page that we were looking at for Elasticsearch was being rendered from HTTPS. However, the Elasticsearch page can go through and, and query the Elasticsearch cluster. So we have a front end page that allows us, gives us access. And then we have access to talk directly to the cluster. Well, the, the talking to the cluster was not over a secure connection. So we had mixed content. In this case, we had active mixed content, which is the, which is one of the important parts. So that that means that there was content that could change what it is that we're seeing on the page, could mess with other parts of the page. So if a static image is HTTP, that's not as dangerous as JavaScript that is HTTP, or as a login frame that is HTTP, or CSS uh, um, uh, that is HTTP, because those can change how the page is displayed, and they can change what's going on, including putting something on top of our normal login uh, box and so forth. Uh, so the elastic search is direct content. We're trying to get information from the database so we can display it and look at logs and things like that. So we were getting co uh, um, 
a message from Mozilla saying, hey, there's a problem with this page, I'm not going to display it. We could look at it with Chromium, because Chromium was not telling us that there was a problem. Once we figured out the problem, there was a really easy fix. See the shield on the, on the display up here, which we didn't notice? <laughs> really again? You can click on the shield and go, hey, I want to look at the stuff on this page. I know the guy that set up this thing. It's on our internal network. If it's not safe, I was already in trouble anyway because he controls both the HTTPS connection as well. So we were able to go through and enable uh, um, mixed content for the Elasticsearch page. It was taken care of. Talked to Rashid Khan uh, a few weeks ago who did a presentation on uh, Elk, Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, and his um, project, Kibana. Um, and he said that um, Elasticsearch is going to fix this problem by allowing us to have HTTPS for the entire uh, page, and, and that's really the proper solution. Um, so the one thing that was bugging us will go away in a, in a in the near future, um, but this is still something that's going to be coming up because now Chromium is also moving to start blocking active um, mixed content. I don't know when it's going to come out, but they've, uh, Google's announced they're going to do it. Um, I think a lot of companies, a lot of projects, are um, this year having to take uh, security much more seriously. Um, Google generally takes the, uh, security fairly uh, seriously, but I think that they are realizing they're going to have to step up their game because we keep having more and more problems and the way to take care of these to finally secure stuff all the way around. Um, so this is good. Um, the, as I say, the proper fix is not to say, hey, here's this mixed content. The proper fix is to get rid of the mixed content and then block it from coming through. Um, now, in the meantime, we'll have a problem because there are sites that have mixed content and, will, that, and they're going to get blocked by Mozilla and soon by Chromium because the way they've been doing things for years will suddenly stop working. That is why Mozilla is only back blocking active mixed content rather than passive mix, mixed content. So, like an image is mostly passive mixed comment, content. They can change what the image is, right? So, if you were trying to look at um, a, a temporary passphrase you were going to use for something, now somebody can man in the middle and give you a, a different passphrase. That's still a possibility, but for the most part, their image is like this, that you know, if somebody messes with it, it doesn't matter that much for the rest of the page, right? So the, the content of it. Um, but they will block the active mixed content, which is, again, things like CSS, JavaScript, things that can go through and, and mess with the DOM, for those of you that know what DOM is and things like that, right? So <clears throat> that's the, 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 the track that Mozilla is taking now. They want to move toward their blocking um, mixed content of all types, but it will be a while before they can get there. I don't know what the, what tax uh, Chromium is taking, but for the reasons that Mozilla has given, I'm betting Chromium is going to have a very similar um, um, uh, setup. There are a few things that are kind of gray, gray area, where it's like, well, is this active or is it not active? And it depends on how you're using it and whether or not it's a Tuesday. Um, so I imagine we'll see a little bit of difference between Mozilla and Chromium from that, just because different engineers come to different perspectives. Um, but overall, it's, it's a good sign that we're going the same direction. Now, uh, I mentioned here that we get the shield up on the on this, uh, address bar. So we talked, when we talked about HTTPS versus HTTP, uh, we talked about you get the, um, the lock telling you that an indication that you've got the HTTPS, the, the secure connection. They've added another, con another piece, which is the shield, um, that will let us know that there's something that we can do that, that is in there. Right now we're talking about mixed content. I imagine that this will get used for other pieces as well as they're trying to give us security information, give us warnings about the page that we're looking at. Um, and the, the, the goal with this is that fairly easily through the user interface, we as the people using the browser can make decisions about what security risks we're, we're willing to take. So for instance, for the Elasticsearch page for work, yeah, whatever. Go, I, I'll go ahead and view it. As I said, the same guy runs both web servers, so I was already you know susceptible if there was a problem anyway. Um, but if I was looking at Elasticsearch's public interface, if they had a demo up, I might not want to, to allow it. 
or if I was looking at my bank, I'm almost definitely not going to want to allow it. Um, so this allows us to uh, look at things in a fairly simple interface uh, for what it is. Uh, all right. And bring my mouse back and make sure I've got everything. Alright. Okay, do I have, are there any questions? Yes, Ed. Um, this is uh, different from having uh, cross domain uh, improvements. And uh, I, I don't know, right now I think all of the browsers uh, do not allow content from different domains into a user. No, they definitely do. If you look, if you look at cookies, if you look at things like that, there's lots of it. JavaScript, lots of JavaScript from cross-domain stuff. Uh, if you're worried about cross-domain um, uh, security, then you really need to install NoScript for for Mozilla. Um, I haven't talked about NoScript yet. It's a fairly complex topic, so I want to cover a bunch of other things as part of this series before we get to NoScript. Um, so first, I forgot to repeat the question. So the question was. Do browsers allow cross-domain content? And yes, they definitely do. So if you pull up www.example.com, can that include information from www.beispiel.ca? And yes, it can. Uh, in fact, many, many pages do. Uh, specifically, they include cookies, and you know, third-party cookies, third-party JavaScript. Uh, if you look at um, images, a lot of things nowadays are coming from a cloud service. Uh, and the cloud service is not the same, or the CDN is not the same as the main domain for the company that you're trying to buy from, or that you're just trying to browse from. Uh, so they're definitely bringing in content from uh, third-party uh, domains. Um, and of course, you also have the companies that do images.domain.com and cs.images.domain.com and whatever else.domain.com. So they have multiple domains within their, you know, subdomains essentially within their domain. Um, but uh, a, a good example is actually um, LinkedIn. So they have LinkedIn.com, but they also have LICDN.com and uh, images.something.com. I don't even remember what the something is. I think it might be LICDN and so forth. Uh, Static.whatever. Hmm? I think they're developing a new protocol that API Mm -hmm. So the, the ways to do that, there are a couple of different ways to do it. The main way to do it is to set it up more intelligently, uh, which LinkedIn has. So licdn.com, I believe they do not own their own CDN. In fact, I know fairly certainly that they are working with at least one third-party CDN, and I'm pretty certain they're working with multiple third-party CDNs. Um, but they basically put their own domain in front of it. So at least when I look at it, I go, oh, this is LinkedIn content. I have reason to believe that it's their own content as opposed to Fred.com, um, where it's coming from, which has no relation to it. And um, sites are getting better at that. You own your own website. You're using third-party content for whatever reason or third-party services. Set up DNS and set up your hosting properly so that those of us looking at your web pages can see where the content is coming from and that you intended this to be part of your web page, not because somebody broke into your your server or they were doing a man in the middle. Um, did that, the, so as far as what they're doing for future protocols, uh, you know, the follow-up question was, uh, there's a future protocol coming up where that will allow inclusion of third-party uh, content um, such that it is appearing as first-party content. I don't know. We have ways of doing that now. Um, but there uh, could certainly be people who are working on standard practices that will make it easier or more plain that you're doing it, and there could easily be a protocol work to make it happen at the protocol level as well, as opposed to just setting it up properly. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much.